بسمیلر Uh, it could be the diversity uh, within the organization, the level of inclusivity within the organization, uh, the laws, the rules and regulations, the policies, the strategies of the organization, long-term, short-term objectives, vision, mission, values, uh, and then again, the history of the organization, the texture and contextualization of the board and the top management, uh, the different levels or the organogram, uh, the, the matrix relationships, Uh, or the hierarchy of relationships uh, within the organization. And then also in culture, we would be seeing uh, the, the national context, uh, the national philosophy, uh, the national uh, texture, and again, uh, the emergence of the culture based upon its history, its languages, uh, its geography, uh, its um, culinary, its, uh, again, contextualization uh, of uh, religion, uh, its comprehension, Uh, of its own national identity and also of its global presence. And then again, uh, the economic and the social uh, fabric uh, of uh, the uh, whole country. Uh, then again, uh, the level of resources and the structure uh, and uh, scriptures uh, within the organization. Now, all of these factors basically would be affecting the culture of the organization and on the other hand, would be facilitating or resisting uh, corporate governance uh, and its implementation. Now, again, Fukuyama uh, basically conceived of business organizations as a product of trust, different governance systems built on disparate structures of trust relationships. So again, uh, when we're talking about the organization and its success and its performance, its productivity and its profitability and its uh, convergence and again, its longevity, then again, the element of trust is very important. The level of trust between the different levels of the hierarchy, uh, both horizontal and vertical. And again, the role uh, of the board of directors and the top management and how uh, they focus on the values uh, of uh, honesty, integrity, accountability, transparency, and merit orientation. So again, all of these things are contributory to uh, trust relationships and again, the development of trust as a whole within the uh, organization. Now, Likit did a lot of research And Likert examines the relevance of national culture compared to corporate governance and securities regulation. So again, like I was talking about, uh, that again, there is a relevance uh, of uh, the national uh, culture related to the corporate governance and securities regulation. So again, uh, the balancing of all of these dimensions and then how they tend to roll out and are implemented uh, within the given frameworks of uh, the organization and also of the country in light of the uh, global contextualization of standardization and also of convergence of different models. So that is how Likert basically uh, examined all of this. And a nation's culture can be perceived as a mother of all path dependencies. A nation's culture might be more persistent than other factors believed to induce path dependence. So again, while chalking out the future of the organization, it's very important to understand the culture of the nation. And then within that culture, it is also extremely important to understand the, uh, the path dependence and, and how the factors involved Uh, to lead towards inducement of path dependence within the organization uh, tend to become even more important and also uh, combined uh, with the value and the overarching value of trust. That, that becomes also very important. Now, when we look at the legal approach, then if not misleading, depiction of the universe of corporate governance regimes because globally they are being implemented, dividing shareholder protection regimes according to the groups of culturally similar nations is informative. So again, what we see is, is that there are different national cultures. There is a different uh, national contextualization. Uh, there are different aspirations. Uh, there are different visions of, of the nations also. And then how is it all dovetailed uh, with the corporate governance uh, is because a very big challenge. And to create a balance between all of these uh, different stakeholders also becomes a very big uh, challenge. But uh, with the right culture, uh, then these uh, can be achieved and can be materialized and can lead to a better organization within a better economy, within a better world uh, as a whole. Now, 
Likit uh, also concluded that corporations are embedded within larger socio-cultural setting, which is sectoral, uh, which is industry-based, and is also on a national level. Cultural values are influential in determining the types of legal regimes perceived and accepted as legitimate. So again, uh, it is through those cultural values that there is a comprehension between the different strata of the organization uh, that what type of legal regimes uh, should be accepted and which are legitimate and which are, uh, which are uh, illegal or which are unethical or which are immoral or which are manipulative or which are exploitative or which tend to infringe upon or encroach upon uh, the, the rights of uh, different segments uh, of society and different uh, players and different uh, stakeholders within uh, a particular organization. So again, uh, that is also extremely important uh, when we are looking uh, at culture and the different influences uh, of culture. Now, uh, when we look at the uh, legal approach, then again, it is a depiction of universe of corporate governance regimes, dividing uh, shareholder protection regimes according to the groups, culturally similar nations is again informative and that is uh, what we were uh, looking at. Uh, we also see that culture influences uh, what are perceived as the maximades of corporate governance. So yes, uh, it is a very big catalyst uh, for corporate governance uh, and tends to hinge upon the different factors and levers uh, to ensure that corporate governance is practiced in the best possible way. Corporate governance calls for optimizing several factors simultaneously and that is again uh, the very essence of corporate governance and we see uh, that these different type of dimensions and factors have to be balanced out for the betterment of all the different stakeholders and shareholders of an organization within the particular context of an economy of a nation. So that is what we see. And uh, again, a very, very important thing is that uh, when we're talking about the theory of corporate governance, then uh, basically uh, at heart, it is the theory of power. And uh, the corporate setting is rife with agency relationships in which certain parties have the ability to unilaterally affect the interests of other parties. And that what we see is the board of governors and again, the top management. But it is also very important, like we looked at in the earlier session, uh, that when we are talking about efficiency uh, and uh, we are talking about equity, then another very important factor is, uh, the, is the factor to ensure uh, that uh, there is uh, also a more balanced approach towards governance and the interests of all parties are met and that is through the value of participation and that becomes very, very important so that we should have a participative culture which is based upon integrity, uh, transparency, merit, uh, uh, self-growth, uh, corporate growth, and also the uh, flourishing of opportunity and again uh, the elimination of exploitation and manipulation. Thank you so much.